What up players? It's Wobots Tay up in this mood and I got one more video for you today. It's the essential two books that I feel every Warhammer Fantasy Empire general should have in his or her library. The Uniforms and Heraldry book for the Empire and this book from Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd edition called Sigmar's Heirs. And this is a treasure mine of great fluff and info for, for your army. But first, let's take a look at the newer book that came out. Uniforms and Heraldry for the Empire. I already did a book on the Skaven. So, this one is actually the one that came out first. And here is the Empire Army gloriously marching to war. You have a bit of an overview of what the Empire is. Then you've got a very, very crisp map of the different provinces as well as some banner designs for uh, the, different, the different towns. So what's interesting is that you've got banner designs for the different towns, or, or uh, the city-states, I mean, for the different provinces, like the state flag. And then you have a great breakdown of the different pieces of armor on and clothing for these for for the troops. So when you're painting, you can break down. Okay, I'll, I'll paint the leggings this color, and then I'll paint the, the 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 these parts on the on the armor this color, and I'll paint the shirt this color. And if you're doing different designs for or colors for the metals, then you can decide. Oh, I'll do gold here and silver here or brass here. It's a good way of visually setting up your paint scheme before you're doing it if you want to. And then you have different banner designs for your regiments. If you want more of a simplistic banner design, easier to black out than uh, something that you have to freehand like these, especially on the banners from the Empire troops, which are always look like they're, they're waving in the wind. One of these simpler patterns might be better. Then you've got shield designs, really easy ways to break up your shields. So if you have no idea how to paint your shields, then this kind of shows you an easy way of, of splitting them or blocking them out. And then the, the different kinds of motifs that the Empire likes to use, and the different kinds of insignia and heraldry that you can find. A lot of griffins, uh, cross swords, and skulls. Skulls, skulls, skulls everywhere. It's not Warhammer, it doesn't have skulls. Then, this is the cool part, or one of the cool parts, you see the Emperor Karl Franz's personal heraldry, like the KF motif, as well as his personal banner, and the different types of banners and shield designs that you can have if you're going for a strictly uh, Altdorf-based Karl Franz personal guard regiment. I think that's pretty cool. And then, you have different banner designs for the different elector counts. Now this is for the truly ambitious painter artist who wants to uh, base, uh, ar base an army or a regiment of an army that comes from a specific city-state like Averland or Wissenland or the Rakeland. Like you can take these designs and really go to town on you know putting them on your battle standard. This is definitely something you do for your battle standard bearer of the army. Then we go into the actual city-states and you see examples of the, of the different color schemes for each of the different members of the army. The reason why I like this more than the Skaven book is because in the Skaven book it was kind of hard to tell the difference between the Night Runners and the Clan Rats and the Slaves and they all kind of had the same body shape and it looked like their weapons were just switched out. But these you can definitely clearly see from their stance, from their weapons and from their armor that they're all different and from what they're wearing that they all belong to different parts of the army. So Altdorf is first and it, it gives you a little bit of fluff, it gives you a, an example of what you can use for your battle standard, it gives you examples of shield designs, and then even includes some artillery color schemes as well as some regiment banners. And it explains too, it also explains why certain things are on the banners like the twin-tailed comet, or it explains the significance of of you know the, the griffin or the skull and the crown so that when you're painting you have a little bit of a motivational reason to do it it's, this is like motivated by fluff then you've got um, regiments of renown so you've got um, you know some artwork some more color design suggestions and a bit of fluff for a regiment that 
is really famous in each city state. So it just goes through each of the each of the um, re regions and provinces and gives you an idea of different things. It also breaks down like, oh, okay, if you're doing a regiment with like two detachments, here's a fluffy way you could do it. Make it like the Drakwald patrol that patrols the uh, Drakwald forest, then it gives you some fluff for each part. So you're not just building guys and putting them on the board, but you can say, oh yeah, this is the, these are the hand gunners that support the main group of the halberdiers, and this is their fluff, and this is the background of the guy in charge and it's a really great motivator but we're just gonna fl quickly flip through all of these and null and a lot of people like to do null because of the artillery and see if there's anything else that we can see from these before we go into a review of the last part of the book which is super interesting I think okay so at the end of the current provinces you get to a section where it details lesser known provinces like Marienburg which is not really uh, a state of the empire it succeeded seceded from the empire so it gives you some tips and hints on how to do Marienburg colors you also get halflings which are now I think you can only get in metal but it gives you some fluff on them and some color schemes for them and then you have the devastated and destroyed city-state of Solund which is no longer in existence because the orcs rampaged through it and, and destroyed it, as well as Sylvania, which is really awesome if you want to do a Vampire Counts uh, themed empire army of like the pre, pre von Karstein uh, Sylvanian army, like kind of like the people, a lot of people like to do pre heresy space marines. So it gives you some inspiration for, for that. I think that's really awesome. Then you get into the Rakes Guard, the Knights as well as foot guard and um, th then you get into the knightly orders this is awesome because even though knights aren't as widely used as they were in 7th edition you still get a lot of great fluff and designs for the different knights and what's great is you don't just stick the book that doesn't just stick to the, the two main ones it also goes over lesser known ones like knights of the blazing sun and even these really obscure ones that can fit the theme of your army, like the Knights of the Black Rose are specifically uh, for um, armies uh, frequently using symbols associated with more the God of Death. So if you're doing one that has like a certain theme, you can pick out different knights to, to add. Um, also wizards, how to paint your wizards and steam tanks and they even have an imperial engineer school color scheme if you're doing a very fluffy themed army based on the imperial engineering school in Nuln. More famous regiments of the empire, even pistoliers and outriders and finally we get to warrior priests and flagellants so pretty much all of the empire troops and then here's the picture on the back with the army returning all beaten up but pretty much anything you can put into an uh, Empire Army. Games Workshop has found some artwork to help you pick out color schemes. Um, but my only criticism, again, is that you don't have actual painted models. So here's, a, here's another cool fluffy one. It's a, this is a militia regiment based around the vampire hunter group with a warrior priest. So see, for this, this would have been a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Reading the fluff, seeing, oh, okay, I have a Sterling army, these guys are based in Sterling. I want a militia regiment, I'll put these guys in it because that's awesome, vampire hunters looking for uh, the undead and evil magic and stuff. <clears throat> but for people who aren't artistic or creative enough to transfer this image to their models, they won't know, like, well, how do I divide the colors? What, what is a full regiment gonna look like? What if, what if I don't know how to do certain, certain things or techniques? There's no um, connection between the fluff and the finished model for people who aren't, who are, who are like basically getting new, uh, new, just getting into the hobby, or even people who, um, you know, younger modelers and gamers who think it's really cool, but then they lose momentum and they lose steam because all they have is a drawing and artwork. So what I'm talking about is, if this was here at the top, you have a description of the fluff, you see, you see like an artist rendering of them for real and then at the bottom you have 
different modeling and painting pictures of like the full regiment and then this is how we made the witch hunter hat these are these are the colors we use here's a little step-by-step -step, uh, base coat wash and highlight of how we did it then I think that could have helped a lot for these books rather than just doing artwork um, I realize it would have been more expensive but um, I just think it would have been a lot a lot more functional and a lot uh, uh, people would have been able to find more use for it would have been like giving little little master classes or hobby uh, painting articles but still um, I do give them credit it, this looks this book is a lot more useful than the Skaven book in my opinion because you even have like smaller known like the Stirling River Patrol who patrol the rivers of the st the stir and you see like their shield has different designs than regular sterling ones different color scheme even the sterling troops you'll notice that they went the extra mile and they made them look really rustic and um, just not as well equipped as other troopers in the empire except for their captain here who's all decked out and very well fed obviously these guys look very dirty and and worn out and some of them aren't even holding like correct standard weapon weaponry like this like these militia guys are just holding like cleavers and stuff but <clears throat> anyway like A for effort and for including all the details that an Empire Collector would want to have um, yeah so really good really good stuff but like I said uh, a little bit more of a connection to the hobby and not just the fluff would have been super appreciated so I give this book after reading it I give it a uh, Four out of five. Four out of five because it's just that little extra thing that would have been super awesome. But for everything else, for getting all of the fluff right, all of the background right, definitely, um, it's definitely really awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna cut here. We're gonna take a little break and then. Oh, the camera cut for me. So um, now we're gonna jump to the other book that I really wanna talk about, which is Sigmar's Heirs. And this one, this is an empire commander's uh, dream come true tells you not even just Empire but any any collector for Warhammer it talks about the history of the Empire in the beginning and then you also have a timeline of the Empire and then it goes into the actual um, government and foreign relations how they handle government what the connection is between the elector counts and the rulers and everything and and then it talks about law and justice and criminals and it talks about how you can roleplay a trial in a Warhammer game of second edition and these are the rules and the kind of stuff which I really love that I don't see much of in third edition third edition being more of a um, you know more of a I don't want to say board game that's the term that's thrown around so much but it's it, this is just a lot more in your head and gives you a lot more to think about it I think um, but I could be wrong because I've only played a couple games of third edition so um, let me know if you you think differently if if third edition is is the best or not now we're going into cults and the great thing about the cults is that it talks about each of the gods their um, some of their quirks and sub cults and it talks it gives you a lot of good ideas for basing regiments in your army like the Knights of the Blazing Sun it gives great background if you want a unit dedicated to Renal the god of thieves or maybe like a militia group it gives you a lot of great great information Especially if you have like the arch lector or something in your in your army or warrior priests, you can get a lot of great fluff for your warrior priests. And it gives you religious names if you want to uh, name your name your warrior priests, or it gives you minor de deities too. And then this is the best part of the book, where it goes over each province, just like the the uniforms and the heraldry did, but it gives you fluff nothing but fluff so it gives you the official name gives you things like who the ruler is what the government is how the government is run what capital their uh, the the region has the name of the capital um, you know just so much information about the land the people and the best things are just the little side things like these sayings or uh, these quotes from people and these sayings of, uh, of, of the people in the region that give you an example of this is the kind of vernacular they use and this is how they talk and th just these random quotes talking about talking about the uh, the people is just so good it gives you different views sometimes um, it quotes dwarves or Bretonians or people who visit the Empire 
Then it gives you significant places in the, the region, like different towns. And this is a good way to kickstart if you're thinking of a regiment for your army, like where they're based or maybe where they're from. Maybe they're from one of these towns that are described as having been destroyed by chaos uh, in the last war. And uh, now they're home, they don't have a home. So like there, there are just so many different great things. And then it gives you an example of, of, of a typical person that you might find and how they talk, how, what their background is, gives you their stats. And, um, and then adventure hooks, like if you're running a role-playing campaign, like these are just different things that you can throw into the mix if your characters happen to be visiting that region. So really, really awesome. It gives you a little gazetteer, gazetteer, is that, I don't know how you pronounce it, of the different towns, what the cat, um, what the, the biggest town in the region is and smaller villages surrounding it and uh, how rich they are, how they gain their wealth. The, the name of the ruler, um, just, you know, the population size, just a lot of general information. Um, but yeah, it's so much great stuff, like Hawkland, the Elector Count saying, we survive and where there is survival, there is hope. And then right under it, you have a refugee from the capital city saying, Hawkland was once the light of the east, now it's just embers. Like, just so much great fluff, fluffy stuff like that. Great artwork. Here's a guy with his Hawkland long rifle. Shows how much he loves it more than his wife. He's like, mmm. Um, but yeah, it goes over each of the regions. And the best thing, so so awesome, it actually has a section on the moot, the moot land for the halflings. And this is the most entertaining section to read. It's just so entertaining how it's written, so much different than the grim, dark chapters of the other, the rest of the book. But <laughs> it's just so, so fluffy and so awesome. Like, let me give you, give you an example. This jade wizard says, if all the world were like this, it would be a Shalian's dream, dream come true. And then right above it, it says, oh, I never heard of the place. It's part of the empire? Really? A place with halflings in charge? Well, whose stupid idea was that then? So you've got like, you know, just so much great fluff about, about the different, just the different uh, regions of the empire. Example of a mootlander. Uh, like a different, uh, you know, different things for how to add and integrate halflings or halfling towns into your campaign. Anyways, so after all of this fluffy stuff, at the end of the book you get to forbidden cults. So ideas of having forbidden cults and if you're having a chaos army, warriors of chaos army, you could have uh, you know, theoretically you can incorporate one of these as maybe one of your marauders or chaos warriors having, um, you know, come from one of these cults or, or, or using one of these instead of just saying, I've got, uh, these are warriors of chaos with the mark of corn. You could say these are warriors of chaos with the mark of corn, but this is their background. They follow this uh, stricture of teaching and this is their, how, how, they, how they worship and this is the symbol so you can paint it onto their banners and stuff. Finally, you have Ill Met in Bogenhafen, which is an uh, adventure for, um, for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. And for anybody who remembers Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 1st Edition, some, what was it called? Something Rotten? No, that was something else. Uh, there's a Bogenhafen adventure in that, and this is set like a couple of years later or, or after. So it's really awesome that they take something from 1st Edition and then they have this as like the sequel. So anybody who remembers that adventure in Bogenhafen, this is like um, the sequel to it without really being a sequel. This is just kind of like a, a spin-off because it's not directly a sequel to what happened, but it just has a lot of the same characters and um, just what happens to them after the first, the first adventure. Just really, really awesome. And it has halflings, so that's awesome too. Uh, yeah, at the end, it's got new careers that they didn't have in the original Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay version 2, edition 2, rulebook, Forager, Astrologer, Exorcist. And then it gives you, if you want to start your adventurer off in these one of these regions, then it has optional things you can add to them, like different talents, different special rules, different skills that they can start with. But yeah, I just really love 
reading this book, going through it, and it gives you, a, it gives me a lot of great ideas for if I want to do my Empire Army, like what can I add to it? What can their background and their fluff be? It'll keep me motivated in painting together with uniforms and heraldry for the color scheme. The only thing that's missing is a practical picture of completed, you know, this is a completed regiment from one of these, one of these regions. But um, yeah, I've. I, I love both of these books, I think they're really great, and I think um, the best thing about it is how you have a crisp, uh, very very s small map there in the uniforms book. You've got a full artistic looking map here, which shows you the different dwarf holds, and it just gives you a lot more of an artistic old world feel. Yep, so thanks. This is my review of the two fluffy Empire books for the Warhammer Fantasy game. And uh, I hope you liked it, and stay tuned for more.